Hi, today we are going to talk about translation. That's not the kind of translation as in from a foreign language into another language, but it's actually translating uh, the uh, code of RNA into a protein. So before we get to that, let's review very quickly. We know that all, at least eukaryotic cells, contain a nucleus where we have chromosomes, and that chromosome contain DNA. And remember from just a few lessons ago, we learned that DNA is made of the this sugar phosphate backbone, uh, two of them. It's a du double-stranded helix, and we have these base pairs that form the rungs. And uh, we also learned about how DNA replicates itself and also how DNA uses transcription to create RNA. Here is just a very simple uh, diagram showing the eukaryotic cell nucleus where the DNA uh, is going uh, from a DNA structure uh, transcript using transcription to create some RNA um, and then uh, translation is going to be the next process that we are going to talk about and that is where the messenger RNA is going to create a protein. So translation is the formation of a protein from the messenger RNA. And there are a few more uh, molecules involved j besides just the mRNA. We're going to talk very briefly about them, however this can be very complicated and if you'd like to uh, try for some advanced proficiency, you are welcome to research this more thoroughly because uh, there are a lot of puzzle pieces to this. Um, first, we have our messenger RNA. We start with that. And um, a ribosome from the cell in the cytoplasm is going to be attaching itself to that mRNA strand. Then we have other kinds of, R of RNA, the tRNA. And here this is just uh, portrayed as, as this shape here, the tRNA. And it attaches itself to the messenger RNA. And the messenger RNA has a very special code that it gives, that it sends out. And this tRNA reads that code and is able to add an amino acid, the appropriate amino acid that the code is for, to this string of amino acids, and eventually that string of amino acids becomes a kind of a pre-protein, a, a, a string that's going to become a protein. So translation eventually stops when a code that says stop is reached. It's called a codon. And we're going to talk more about that in the next slide. Now you are probably asking what in the world is a codon? Uh, what a strange word. And is it a special code? Uh, that's a really good question. If we look at this diagram here, we have uh, right along here the backbone of an mRNA molecule. And it is divided into, the uh, bases are divided into threes. We have a triplet here and a triplet here and a triplet here. And that is, each of those is a codon. A codon is a nucleotide triplet three of them together, three of them together, three of them together. Each one of them specifies for a specific amino acid or for a start or a stop signal. Start meaning we're going to begin production of a new protein or stop meaning this is the very last amino acid we're not going to do anymore. So that's what those mean. This code GCC is um, specific for the amino acid alanine. This AUG codon is specific for methionine, which actually it's, this is an incorrect diagram because methionine is a start code. And uh, you'll learn how to read tables to know uh, how to read these codes. These tRNA molecules here are represented, and they have an anticodon right here, which uh, pair up with the mRNA codon. And these are very specific to give us just the right amino acid. Here they are showing amino acids carried by the tRNA, and they are joined to the chain of amino acids by these bonds here, peptide bonds. And so that is how the protein gets formed. 
Now, don't be afraid of this scary looking table. Um, it might look intimidating, but really it's not at all. It is a table to help you read the codons and know which amino acids they are coding for. So here we have um, our four different possible bases um, for the first base. Across the top are the uh, bases we could choose from for the second base and along this side for the third base. So let's say we have um, on the mRNA chain we have three bases, C, and then a U, and a U. That gives us the um, amino acid leucine right there. And you'll notice that some amino acids can be formed using not just one particular triplet, but um, there could be several different triplets here. There are four different uh, nucleotide triplets that produce leucine. Um, here we have some different stop codons. Um, that produce those. Here, here was our methionine start codon, and these are the 20 different amino acids that get produced by these uh, triplet nucleotide um, bases, and uh, you need to basically know how to read this table. You certainly do not have to memorize it. So that brings us to a very important concept, and that is that this uh, it, this process is universal to life on Earth. All life uses proteins, and the way they are made is through translation. And uh, just a quick recap, we have our DNA molecule here, and this is just a little diagram showing how uh, DNA will go through transcription to form mRNA. And here you see how the codon is these three nucleotides together. That codon codes for a particular amino acid. And these code for this amino acid. Each one forms for codes for a very specific amino acid. These are just abbreviations. Um, and those amino acids strung together in a particular order will make a protein. Uh, we do have a few more things that need to happen to this string of amino acids before it becomes a full-fledged protein, and we're going to find out about that in the next chapter. But I tried to represent a lot of different kinds of life on Earth. All of these forms of life um, use this process. It is critical to everything that lives. Now, some ideas for advanced proficiency. If you're interested into looking into more of these details about how um, the tRNA molecules uh, enable the translation process, that's a great research topic, or what the role of rRNA is, um, what are some of the differences between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic um, processes for translation. Uh, you can research different proteins. What 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 do they do? What are they important for in the body, in the cell, in cell function, in a plant, and uh, whatever it is you're, you're researching that. Um, you can research something else that you have a great idea for, some questions that you had during this presentation. That would be really good. So uh, thanks a lot, and we'll see you in class.